Hey everybody, this is HG Shapes here. I'm back with another video. Today I have a few old products actually to talk to you about today. I think I've reviewed every one of these on my channel. Who knew? Um, the sort of inspiration for everything that I'm using today is this old tub of l, &L Grooming Now Declaration Grooming After the Rain. Uh, I've used this a few times on my channel before and we've just got that much soap left in this uh, tub. It was, I, I had kind of gotten the big circle of death in the middle and then I sort of re uh, semestered around. So now this is what we have left. I'm really eager to uh, kill off this tub, as they say. This was my first um, soap that I ever bought by Declaration Grooming, Allo Grooming. Um, and this sort of was the beginning of the end for me and all of Scott's uh, wonderful products, whether it be the soaps or the aftershaves or the brushes or whatever. Um, this is of course the old bison base, nothing wrong with the bison base. Uh, this particular soap has notes of pine, lavender, and cedar. As the name implies, it sort of smells like you're in the middle of a uh, forest with some pine trees around you after the rain, right? So that's where the name comes from with that. Uh, I try not to do this as much nowadays in terms of always just picking up the matching set, but because again, this was an old pickup for me, I did buy the matching splash. So I'll be talking to you about that at the end. Um, the razor for today is a vintage English Gillette flat bottom tech. Um, you know, it's a flat bottom because it doesn't have the, boy, it's hard to show, isn't it? Uh, it doesn't have the diamond imprint on the bottom. And um, those, of course, have to be made in England to classify at least for this particular group of flat bottom techs. This uh, top cap as well is what they call a peaked cap. So it comes to a peak at the top. Um, it varies slightly from the other top caps that would go with these razors um, of that era. Not entirely convinced that it does make a huge difference and how it shaves, but I have not used a traditional cap um, flat bottom tech. So I have another one coming in from the UK in a week or two, and I'll be looking forward to comparing those and seeing if they vary at all really in their shape quality. Inside it, a Persona 74 tungsten vintage blade. This will be its fourth use. Uh, it was quite rough for me on its first shave, but now it's gradually been getting smoother and more nice. Uh, the last shave I had with it, two days ago was awesome. So let's hope for that. Um, the last item to talk to you about today, just shaking on some water a bit now, of course. The last item, another um, Declaration Grooming Knot last week. This one in a acrylic custom dogwood handcrafts handle. Um, this, I bought this handle uh, secondhand and took the synthetic knot that was out of it sent my B8 knot here to Steven and he put them together for me. And this brush, I tell you, it has really um, matured nicely. These brushes do change over time. And in the in the original handle that this knot was set in, it was very uncomfortable for me to use. Um, it did, the brush didn't splay easily and it just felt like a giant um, sponge that I was lathering with. Because um, while these tips are very soft, I don't like it to feel like they're so back bony that you're just like moving a sponge like this around your face. Um, so with this, it's uh, opened it up really, really nicely and has gotten even softer maybe. So it just feels super luxurious while using. So the Dogwood Handcraft B8. Uh, that's all I'm gonna be using today. I'm gonna talk to you about fragrance at the end. We're gonna try and start talking about fragrances more. Uh, in my videos because I do wear one most days, so might as well talk about it, right? Uh, for now, going to wet my face, load up the soap, and I am gonna work in the bowl again. The bowl has been proving to be uh, quite helpful for me, so be right back. After a few minutes of working around here in the bowl, this is kind of what we got going on. Um, the bison base does tend to be a little bit stringy um, and quite bubbly as well, which I haven't really been able to get rid of those bubbles um, in the beginning part, like kind of in the proto lather part, or even once I've started working it on my face, I find that 
once I get a certain amount of water in it, it just becomes bubbly. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, but a great performer nonetheless, just looks a little bit different than I might prefer. So here we go, I'm gonna go into a face lather. First pass with the green. All right, first pass done there. Um, this is a pretty mild razor by modern standards. Doesn't mean you can't do damage to yourself if you're not, you know, mindful. But uh, yeah, find that with this, if you turn and ride the cap a bit more, the cap side instead of the safety bar side, that it that seems to be the optimal angle for me with this razor and some others as well. So uh, blades feeling good, lathers feeling good. Gonna rinse, come back for pass number two. Pass number two, cross the grain.
Okay, whizzing through second pass there. Um, yeah, nothing particular to say. Gonna rinse, come back for the last pass against the grain. Okay, a couple touch-ups there, but I think we're, we're all good to go here. Um, wow, my impression of that third pass is, I was, you know, I was reminded this week during my third passes with this razor that this is one of the best against the grain razors that I've ever used. Um, I think it might have an edge even on the Rockwell 6C on a two or a one plate. There's just something that's nicer about the slim design of this when you're going against the grain versus the Rockwell, which is a bit more bulky. Um, yeah, this was a really nice shave. One of the best I think I've had on camera in, you know, a long time, because it is a little bit different when I'm uh, doing the video versus when I'm just shaving uh, during the week. But yeah, this is a really nice shave. So gonna rinse, come back and talk to you over post shave. For post shave today, as mentioned, the matching splash from Declaration Grooming after the rain. So you gotta give it a few good shakes. This is uh, some people's favorite uh, splash um, out there, period. Um, it's got a good mix of, you know, the typical alcohol and witch hazel, but then a whole slew of botanical ingredients. And it's also got menthol, which some people quite like. For me, I could take it or leave it on the menthol. Um, I like a nice touch of it, you know, just, or I should say, I like a touch of it, but something with this particular bottle, this particular fragrance, um, I don't know, the menthol feels more concentrated to me in this particular bottle than in other Declaration Splashes that I have. And so the menthol does become almost annoying uh, in some parts for me. So. Like sometimes it'll stick on my hands and then I feel my hands start to get cold and I don't I don't need that sensation, you know? So that's my only gripe with it. Um, I think the scent uh, longevity is quite good on this. And uh, I get a bit more of the pine note in this. I think also just because the pine kind of goes with the alcohol menthol smell um, as well. So yes, a, a great performer in this splash, just not particularly my favorite, just because for some reason I seem to get a lot of menthol um, more, than, more than I'm accustomed to with Scott's offerings. 
Um, finally today, I want to talk to you about the fragrance that I always pair, well not always, but often pair with uh, After the Rain. This is uh, Chatillon Lux Eau du Trajet, and um, this is a traditional Chypre, which is basically uh, three main components. It's got citrus, labanum, and oak moss. EDT also has um, lavender in it, which goes with After the Rain, and then kind of the woodsy, green, labdanum oak moss stuff goes with uh, After the Rain. Um, so if I were to compare, you know, the perfuming styles of, you know, Scott at Declaration versus Sean at Chateau Looks, um, Scott is certainly going for a much simpler overall scent, which is not a bad thing. Um, I think one of Scott's greatest assets as a soap maker or aftershave maker is that he kind of gets it and he can create something while simplistic that is also very, uh, you know, enjoyable by the masses. Whereas some of the masses may not appreciate the complexity of the scent. And um, I certainly feel like this takes you on a journey as you wear the fragrance and it, you know, changes over time. And there are, you know, different spots where you have more of the, you know, the citrus bergamot stuff and you get some of the lavender, you get some oak moss and it just sort of changes over time. But I think that's a great pairing. Unfortunately, the EDT has been recently discontinued by Chateau Lux, so you have to find that on the pre-owned market. I think it's absolutely worth it. And you know, that's also the first Chateau Lux EDT I ever bought. And uh, it served me well. I've taken it with me when I've traveled and uh, stuff like that. So that's my spiel about the fragrances there. Okay, quick rundown of the stuff I used. So English, vintage, Gillette, flat bottom tech. If you look on eBay at the right time, you typically, I mean, you can find these in the US, but usually they're being sold by sellers in the UK, right? Because um, that's where they were made originally. If you look at the right time, you can get one of these for about $15, $20 shipped for one that's in, you know, lesser condition than this one. If you want one that's in good, good condition, I got this one, I think for $40 shipped and it was already in the US. So they're not expensive razors whatsoever. And I think it's worth trying out if you never have before. The only people that maybe wouldn't like this razor are people who like a very aggressive razor or something that has a lot of blade feel. Um, you will have to do three passes with this to get super close, but it's just so enjoyable to use that I don't mind, you know, spending the extra time with it maybe than if I were using a more aggressive razor. Um, it's, yeah, it's just wonderful to use and I forgot how much I you know, like to use that. The B8 with the Dogwood Handcrafts custom acrylic handle. Wow, this brush has turned out to be really, really nice. All the issues that I had when it when the knot was set in the old handle have totally gone away. Doesn't feel stiff, doesn't feel like it hogs the ladder, you know, any of that. So um, I'm really, really happy with how that brush has turned out. Um, and then finally the soap from Declaration Grooming, the Bison Base. Um, again, nothing wrong with the old Bison Base. It's not like it's bad or you can't use it or anything. Again, my, my only thing is it has been a little bit difficult for me to get it past the bubbly phase. And maybe that's just how it has to be. I mean, it's certainly slick and creamy and all that. It's just sometimes I wish it came together a bit more, um, which, that, which that could be on me, you know, uh, it's totally possible. But after the rain, probably still got, I don't know, 10, 15 shaves left in this tub. So I'm not gonna be killing it anytime soon, but I'm gonna keep working on it. So, okay, I think that's it for today. Um, thank you, as always, if you made it this far, if you made it this far, you are uh, exceptional. You are amazing. And um, next week, uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna use it use yet. Maybe another vintage razor because I did enjoy using the flat bottom tech so much this week. We'll see. Um, until then, Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, take care. Thanks. Bye.